Hello Jennifer, uh, we are hi. pleased to meet you here in Paris. Hi Sir. So my first question, it's about uh, you, when you made the monster, mm -hmm. you filmed it in uh, black and white. So do you think for the Babadook, do the, the same thing? Well, we decided, I, I originally wanted to shoot black and white. Yeah. But uh, my producer nearly had a fit <laughs> because it's very hard to sell black and white films. Yes. But also, more than that, I wanted the film to have a different life. So I wanted it to feel some colour, but not too much. Yes, because uh, in the movie the colour are dark, uh, yes. very, very dark. Yeah, so we had black through to white, yes. but we also had some blue and some yes. burgundy. But we can see... Uh, uh, two, uh, I remember two scenes. Mm -hmm. The first one when they are in the restaurant, mm -hmm. you have uh, Amelia and Samuel, and then uh, a family next mm -hmm. with more colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, after we have uh, Amelia at the birthday party. Yes. With the with his sister and uh, the other women. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what? Can you, uh, what do you want to show uh, to this? In terms of uh, uh, colors, yes. The yeah, I, f I wanted it to have a feeling of uh, that it was cold, yeah. but not completely black and white. So uh, there needed to be color, but in the frame we just restricted all colors down to blue and burgundy. And this. Uh, made people, I wanted people to feel uncomfortable yes. and to feel that something uh, wasn't good, yes. wasn't right. And uh, the situation uh, of Amelia and his son is the worst. Uh, it gets worse yeah, it and gets worse. worse yeah, yes. And the film actually becomes more black and white yes. as it goes along. But so it was our plan to take colour out as we went along. But we didn't do it in post-production, we did it in uh, the location. Okay. on set uh, or on the location. So it was done mainly in production design, uh, which I think feels different to just doing it in post. Uh, have you think when you, uh, before the, the shooting, to take the two actors of the of Monster uh, and, and not... And use it, yes. Um, no, because uh, the little boy in Monster would yeah. have been uh, 13, 14, <laughs> so he would have been too old. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, he was a little bit too young as well, like that yeah. character, that little actor was maybe, I think he was three or four, mm -hmm. and uh, Noah, who we cast, was six, so he was a, a little bit older. And also Essie uh, we cast because she's an extraordinary mm -hmm. actress and uh, we needed someone who had a huge strength yes. and also vulnerability. So that's why the casting was slightly different okay. for Babadook. Uh, so um, how it was to work with uh, Noah? Ah, oh, nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, c'était très dur, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wonderful because he was a true actor, uh, naturally. Yes, and we can see it in the movie. Yeah, and uh, he has a lot of emotion and mm -hmm. a lot of empathy. Um, so we worked together. I, I used to be an actor, and I was an actor as a child. Yes. So I knew what it was like to act at that age. And it was my job to help him mm -hmm. and to give him confidence and to feel everything with him. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was so exhausting because if he had to get angry in a scene, I would get angry uh, to give him permission and we, we did it together. Yes. So it yeah, was we can see in the movie he's very strong. He yeah. He, uh, he's very good. Yeah, he got, he got better and better. Yes. And that was because he felt very, very confident. Mm -hmm. um, and also he knew the whole story. Mm -hmm. So before we started shooting, I sat down with him and I told him the story of the Babadook, yes. the less scary yes. <laughs> children's <laughs> version. <laughs> yes. But he understood. Um, 
And so he felt really a part of the, the film. He was a, a very big part of the and film. What about uh, Essie? Essie, yes. Essie uh, is a very good friend. Mm. Um, I studied acting with Essie at drama school at NIDA in Australia. And uh, we have a very long friendship and a lot of trust. And Essie's a wonderful actress, but it's a very, very hard role. Yes. So she she trusted me to push her in the right way, and mm. uh, we got there together. Okay. <laughs> well, because uh, in the movie she's very well, she's very good. And, yeah. Uh, um, when the during the movie she she go down. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a hard part yes. for a woman to play yes. because it's not flattering. Mm. She doesn't look uh, beautiful, beautiful yes. and composed. She has to become a monster. Yeah. And a lot of actresses don't have mm. that uh, courage to, to go to that place, but she really did. Uh, in the first place, it was an evidence for you to take AC or...? Uh, it, uh, initially, I thought AC might be too strong. She's a very strong actress, mm. but... Uh, She auditioned for us and she did a beautifully soft uh, audition and it was a hard uh, part to cast because it's very complex yes. and it has a broad uh, range and the more complex the character, the less actresses can play yes. it. But I, f I feel that we were very lucky to have Essie in that role. Mm. Uh, for you the music was uh, important? Very. Uh, Yes. Yeah. But music we can uh, we can see in the movie when she opened the book. Yeah. The music is different. Yes. Uh, this little music. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted music and sound to bleed. Yes. So that you didn't notice um, strong music coming, but uh, you felt sound just turned into music. Yes. It was very important for me. There's not much music in the film. No. Uh, but the music that's there is uh, is sometimes very strong. Uh, I really wanted it to echo what was going on for Amelia. Like the the scene at the end in the house, mm. the the sound is very powerful. I think. Yeah, yeah. I um, I'm very obsessed with sound. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's important too because uh, yeah. we can. Uh, Uh, on peut être immergé uh, oui. plus facilement dans le, oui. uh, dans le film. Oui, yeah. um, especially this kind of film, yes. I think it's important for... Sometimes though, in uh, standard horror films, music is used too much. I yes, feel like sometimes they're telling you when to be yes. scared. I remember uh, it's in uh, Sinister. Ah, yes. We, uh, you know, with the music, When something, to feel yes, something, yes, uh, something happened, so... Yeah, and it's a different approach. For yes. me, I find to take sound out yes. and to take music out is very frightening because it's you better. don't have any map yes. of uh, where to go and how to feel. So that, that was the approach that I yes. took. And a lot of stress is, yeah. is present. Yeah, yeah. thinking what, what's going to happen. I don't yes. have the cues, you know. It's better, actually. Yeah, I, I prefer it. Yeah. yeah. What can you tell us about your future projects? Do you think you're gonna film other horror movie or...? For me it's all about the quality and yes. the, the story and the idea behind a film. So uh, the, I'm writing two films at the moment. One of them is in a horror world but it's not a horror film. Okay. Um, But I've had a lot of offers <laughs> of horror <laughs> since then, and I'm being very uh, selective. Yes. I'm not saying I wouldn't make another horror film. I really love horror, yes. and uh, I don't look down on it. But it would have to have a deeper, it would have to have a deeper message, a deeper theme to it, like Babadook has. Yes, mm. yes, because uh, with the death of the husband. Is, uh, yeah, and also there's a lot of. Um, You know, there's the idea for me to face the difficult parts of your life is really mm -hmm. the most important yeah. thing in this film, rather than the scares. Yeah. yeah but during the movie, I think the the sister mm -hmm. is uh, became a egoist. 
uh, selfish yes. when uh, Amelia called her and uh, explained uh, what happened. What happened, and mm. she she say, uh, uh, "Oh, you can call the the police." Or mm. Yeah, it's not very compassionate. No, no. no. <laughs> I think the characters in the film around Amelia are slightly heightened, and uh, I wanted it to be from Amelia's perspective. Yes. But she's like a drowning woman in a way. She's trying to grab hold of yeah. life rafts, and everyone keeps uh, disappearing on her. Yes. But she's not making it easy for other people either, because she doesn't really ask for help. Yes. So I think it's the classic thing that women can do of saying, I'm fine, I'm fine, yes. I'm fine. But in fact, but then she's she, not. She's <laughs> not fine at all. But so. we can see the true face of, of, the, uh, of people because uh, in reality, I think uh, it's going to be the same, yeah. in fact. We, we all, I think we all have our masks yes. and we all say to the, we all want to say to the world, I'm coping, I'm okay. But the point of the film is if you hide too much and that yes. mask becomes the only thing that you present, there's going to be problems come up. Yes. So uh, do you think you could be a, a director and actress on the same movie? No, no way. <laughs> <laughs> no yes. way. I did it once in a film, uh, a short film. Yes. And I really hate it was a traumatic experience <laughs> watching myself yes. and having to edit myself. I don't know how Clint Eastwood, you know, has done it for all those years. It's and other directors. Yes. It's, it's not enjoyable. Um, I much prefer to be behind the camera now. I have no yes. no desire to act. So I feel like I'm in the right place. Yes. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what can you tell to the French people to see Mr. Babadook? Well, I think <laughs> people will say, oh, I don't like horror, or I, but I think, you know, the story is what's most important here, and uh, it's a very powerful story for women, yes. and, um, and, you know, it's very psychological and emotional, so I'd say... Uh, don't think of the H word, don't think of horror, <laughs> um, you know, think of the powerful story behind it and come and see it. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. Merci, merci. merci. <laughs>